When an x-ray is performed of the wrist, you will likely see uh, two views, the PA and the lateral, and perhaps an oblique view as well. So this is what a normal wrist should look like. There are a few key bony features to note when analyzing a wrist x-ray. First of all, the distal radius should have a smooth contour that you can clearly outline, and it should cup the carpal bones. The radial inclination is the slope of the distal radial articular surface relative to the radial shaft, and it should be about 15 to 25 degrees. And finally, the radial height should be around 8 to 14 millimeters. On the lateral view, again, there should be a smooth distal radial contour, and the radius, lunate, capitate, and third metacarpals should all be aligned. On the left is the x-ray of a patient with a Colley's fracture. This is a fracture of the distal radius that usually happens after a fall onto an outstretched hand. It results in dorsal angulation and impaction of the distal fracture component. In this example, you can see that the radial contour is no longer smooth and that there is a loss of radial height. On the lateral view, you can see that the head of the radius has been dorsally displaced. A Smith fracture is sort of the opposite of a Colley's fracture in that it's a distal radius fracture in which the distal fracture component is, is displaced in a volar direction. It typically occurs after a fall onto a flexed wrist. As you can see on the PA view, it can look pretty similar to Colley's fracture. The distal radial contour is no longer smooth and there is a loss of radial height. On the lateral view, however, you can clearly see that the distal radius is displaced in a volar direction rather than a dorsal direction.